bring that out. Or your book that's even better. Page 18, I asked you to read. I asked you to start reading on page 18. Okay, so as you were looking at this page, uh, notice the very first page has to do with what is news. And they give the example of this Virginian pilot front page and why did the editor choose the stories he chose? Okay, so they interviewed this guy, Dennis Finley. Why did he choose these stories? Well, he employs something that I want you to remember, this term called news judgment. Okay, news judgments. And that's spelled either with an E or without an E here. So this is the ability, the, the, um, the skill of knowing where news belongs, say, on the front page or in the newspaper, or is it news at all? all right now, this is a term that uh, when I taught this last semester, I told students to write it down. It looks like you guys are being real, doing a great job in this section. You are taking notes. Uh, but when it came to the test and I had to fill in the blank for news judgment, nobody got that because they hadn't taken notes, but you're doing that. So I appreciate that. So as you read this, just remember that this editor, he's employing that um, very important skill, news judgment, which you probably don't have right off the bat. This is a skill you have to gain over time. Um, if you read a lot of news, you do gain this skill. You, you, you may already have this skill. For instance, uh, if you read a lot of news and you watch a lot of news, international news, something tragic happens overseas. Um, is that news here? For instance, the recent um, the massacre at the French uh, magazine, uh, that was newsworthy, right? Uh, but that actually got a lot more attention than it normally would uh, because of, of perhaps something related here, right? And that's the, the fear that we have of a possible terrorist attack. Um, oftentimes, Americans don't care about international news. So usually that would be on page two, page three, uh, much later buried in the newspaper. Uh, and this is, kind of, this is an exception. We're starting to care more about international news. So you would have to be aware of that, aware of changing tides, a ch a changing trends. We care more about international news, so you do see it uh, more prominently placed. But it used to be you would never see that on the first page. That would be a rarity. Okay, so you, you were developing this skill and, and you'll want to develop that more and more as you go through the semester. And that's one reason you want to be reading news, you want to be watching news and discipline yourself to, to take in a lot of current events during the semester. Okay, let's turn to the next page. Page 19 in our reading here. On the side there, this is a really important little column. So if you're a highlighter or an underliner, you may want to really uh, asterisk this. This is a really important little list here, and I wish they had expanded it in their textbook. What makes a story interesting to readers? Well, how, and also, how do uh, editors choose particular stories, whether, they're not gonna, whether or not they're even going to use the story in the newspaper or on TV? Uh, they use something called news values. And I'm going to add one. Okay, here they have seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have seven. I'm going to add one to this so there's going to be eight. Okay, so what I want you to do is when you are studying for a test, you want to not only memorize the news value and the definition, you want to memorize the, an example. You want to memorize an example of each of these because some of these students get confused. Uh, and make sure you know what the word itself means just in general usage. Okay. Impact. Okay, impact is basically, does the story matter to readers? How many people does it affect? Okay, does it, does it impact them personally? Does it affect them personally? Okay, so we're talking about big numbers of impact. Thousands, millions of people Right, uh, hundreds of thousands, not just, you know, oh, it, that some students got confused about the, some of these last time. And so they thought, well, an accident, that impacts the family members and loved ones of, of the people who were killed. Well, that's not really impact. I, I, it is impact for them, yes. But impact, we're talking about things like there's a sudden tuition increase at this university. So impact would be affecting a lot of people like a tuition hike if it's a school story. Right, that's a good example to learn. Uh, for general population, a tax increase. Okay, this affects people. This affects them where, where it counts, right, the pocketbook. People want to know. 
Uh, is this, what, what kind of news can I use? And this would definitely be there, right? People are kind of, you know, self-interested. They want something that, that's going to affect them. They want to know what the news that affects them personally, and that's definitely um, news that affects them. So be thinking about big numbers when you think about impact, and that's the sort of thing that we're talking about with big numbers. Okay, the next one, the book calls immediacy. It's more often called timeliness. Okay, is it happening? How recent is it? has it happened? Is it happening now? Uh, is it about to happen? This has all to do with how recent is it? Is it, it has to be new for it to be news, right? So is it new <laughs> for it to be news? Okay, classic example of this, there's categories of news that are very immediate, they're very timely. Think about, would you be interested in last month's weather cast? Probably not, right? So weather. We want to know what's going to happen, what's happening today. Think of all the time they spend on weather. These were the highs today, and this was, was this the average dew point, and on and on, the, the moon position, waxing, waning, whatever, right? And that's the most watched part of a TV news broadcast It's the weather. That's what a lot of people are watching it for. So weather is a big one. Okay, another one. Next one here is proximity. How close to us is the news? Okay, how close to us is the news? Good example would be, uh, do we care that there's a big uh, snarled up traffic, uh, you know, drive, drive home time, is that, and that's happening in Bismarck, North Dakota. Do we care about that here in Pocatello? No. If it's happening here, yes. How am I going to get home? Right, so uh, traffic, local traffic, we care about, unless there's fatalities, and that is a sad part of news, as you probably know, if it bleeds, it leads. Um, we don't really care about traffic in other cities, unless there's some reason to care for us personally. So traffic is a good uh, example of proximity, and it usually only affects those very local to that traffic. All right, and then we have prominence. Okay, if somebody is prominent, they are what? They're well known. What are some other synonyms, adjectives? Definition of prominence. Think of, are, are we prominent citizens? Unless I know, maybe, maybe some of you are, I don't know. But prominence has to do with uh, someone, a celebrity, right, a politician. Right, and so make sure you understand the word promise. It has to do with an individual, okay, a person. Okay, so we're not talking about uh, regions of the country or locations. We're talking only about people with prominence. So, good example would be um, I go out, I buy a new dog. News, newsworthy, Judy Morris, instructor, Pocatello, Idaho State University, gets a new dog. Come on. Some of you are, you'd, you'd be interested in that? Okay, you're sweet. You all are very sweet. But no, President, gets a, President Obama gets a new dog. News. All right, see the difference? Okay, so it depends. It really depends. It could be the same exact um, thing going on. You know, I get a dog versus President gets a dog. He makes the news. Promise. I don't. Um, novelty is what the book calls the next one. It's often called news of the unusual, news of the weird. Okay, classic example, and they actually give it in the book here. Yes, um, a dog biting a man. Does that happen very often? Yeah, my dogs bite me all the time. They're usually trying to get food out of my hand or something, right? But uh, not news. Man bites a dog. News? Well, maybe like something for the back page or something, you know? Okay, so a man bites dog, and they give you an example in the book. Did they, was that in this reading? Yeah, they used the man by dog. Okay, but there was all, even a little uh, anecdote, and I might, oh, there it is, on the bottom of page 18. This just in man bites dog on the right hand. It's about a wolf. Have conflict. Most news has some sort of conflict, right? So this is a clash of dueling interests. 
man with war, right? How about um, man versus himself, something psychological, himself. Man versus woman, a marital thing, right? So um, another example of this, though, would be more of a simulated type of a conflict that's not a deathly conflict, but it's full of conflict. It's often on its own section in the newspaper as well as a newscast. Does anyone know where I'm going? Sports. Sports is a classic example of conflict. Team versus team, country versus country in the Olympics, right? There's a lot of conflict in this, but thankfully it's usually a friendly sort of usually conflict. Sports. Okay, and then we have emotions. And, uh, and this is interesting that they, the book call, our book calls this emotions, it's more commonly called human interest. Okay, and, and does the story make us happy, make us sad? Uh, usually this has to do with everyday people. So stories about everyday people and usually about some sort of quiet victory or triumph over regular circumstances. Okay, so Steve Hartman, the reporter who is featured in that little article, everybody has a story, he is the master at this type of story. In fact, that's all he does. He does a feature every Friday for CBS News. Currency. Currency. And we're not talking about money. Okay, so we're talking about ongoing stories, stories unfolding, right? So for right now, the um, that magazine uh, killing and then the aftermath of finding the the, uh, the perpetrators, that would be an example of currency. Okay, so there's more than one story. Maybe it lasts a whole summer. People are interested in this. Maybe there's a trial. Um, it's, thing, it's stories that people are talking about that are ongoing. I don't know if you would be familiar. Okay, Obamacare. That would be another example, ongoing. Right, lots of uh, um, problems with the website. Uh, people not liking it. Supreme Court supporting it. Right, you know, just lots of news involving Obamacare, the health care reform initiatives, right? So that would be an example. Um, this, this airliner right now, the Malaysia airplane, that they've just found the voice recorder. Right? Lots of articles about this. It's ongoing, right? This would be an example of something that's current. It's currency as a news value. It has something that it has staying power. It's, it's a continual thing in the news. So any questions about that? Now we're going to put you...